Hey everyone, uh, Jasper here with D3 in 10 minutes or less. Like I just said, I'm Jasper and today we're switching things up. I'm giving you an intro video after I've recorded to let you know you really need to watch this thing all the way through. We stumble, we hit a little bit of a rocky patch about eight, nine minutes in, but then we push through and we get there. So I really appreciate you all being here. Uh, today we're going to work on uh, actually creating an application that uses React Query to get data from another API and bring it in what we're going to end up with instead of having fake data we're going to have real data just like this look at that isn't it beautiful those are real data points uh, but you have to watch the video all the way through to see what the data points are how about that all right uh with that let's let's get into it so what you'll notice here is that we've uh, we've got a bit of a Christmas tree thing going. It's because we've added some files. Uh, there's some that have errors because TypeScript can be a little barky sometimes. Uh, but I'll just take you through this new structure real real quickly. Uh, so within source, we've built out components, pages, and utils. Uh, Top to bottom, components are reusable pieces throughout the application. So if you're building a dashboard with D3 and React, you might want to build out bar chart once if you're going to use bar chart in different places or line chart once. That's the kind of thing you would dump into components. Pages is specific pages and lay layouts. So if it's a single page app, you might not need this. But if you have any sort of, uh, if you're trying to, let's say, take a Tableau dashboard and rebuild it as a web application that has more functionality, uh, pages would be great because that's where you could put the individual tabs that people tab through. Uh, I'm not uh, saying you should put individual tabs to look exactly like a Tableau dashboard within a web application, but if you have specific layouts that you want to shift between, that's where pages would go. And then utils is the all-important home for things like queries, for types, if you have types to find. Looks up. Got it right there, but I'll put that in utils, styles, all your CSS can live in there, and uh, tests. So, this is the layout that I've got. There are different ways you can go about it. Some people like to nest things atomically, which means that within components, I would have a folder for bars that has bars.tsx, bars.css, so the styles for bars would all live right there. I like this because it just helps me. I, I can search for things throughout, right? So, if I wanted to find everything for bars, I could just go here and search for bars search for bars there we go okay so that's the structure we've changed we've also brought in some new friends to the party namely react query and then a couple types so the types just help typescript know that we know what we're doing uh, it helps me to know what i'm doing as well uh, react query is super friendly if you are not super into building out everything from scratch, right? React Query uses hooks and context to help you uh, run more efficient queries when you're doing API calls against servers. So if you're building a web application that uses data viz, you likely don't have just a static CSV data set. You, you're likely hitting a server somewhere and saying, hey, I want this data from here and here's my key. So React Query helps you do all those things more efficiently. So big plus one for React Query. Speaking of React Query, let's take a look at the new query I built out. So what we're doing here, is uh, we're making a fetch call. You can see we've got fetch, and we're passing through some parameters to api.openweathermap.org. So we're gonna build out uh, some weather vi visualizations, and the way we're gonna do it is hitting this public API that is friendly enough to give you an API key and a couple different places you can hit to get data. So you can see we've structured it out so that you can pass through an argument for the latitude and longitude. Uh, we've got exclude string because they send you all sorts of data back. So you can say like, keep those things. I just want this one specific one. And then uh, your API key. So whoops, <laughs> I'll block that out so it doesn't show on the video. Uh, so you'll sign up with them and they'll give you an a API key and you use that so they know like, all right, this person's legit. Uh, the reason I'll block out what just showed on mine is I don't want you Yahoo's using my API key. You can go and get your own, it's free. I, I don't want to, I don't want someone to bring it down and then point it back to me. So with that, uh, we get back three different objects, right? Three different objects. We get is loading, error, and data. So is loading is a basic 
Boolean. Uh, error isn't uh, always returned, right? If there is an error in your query, then it's going to say, uh, hey, here's an error and here's the message. So we'll return just a fun little, ah, crikey, error message, error message. If it isn't loading and there's no error, it will return data. So in that instance, it will we'll just get that data object right there. One thing that doesn't exist with this right now, which I'll have to, which you will have to do if you want your application to really sing, is uh, these are all unknowns because we're doing an a API query, right? Error, unknown, data, any. That's pretty. That's pretty broad, and any in TypeScript is just like the ultimate foot gun. It removes any uh, excuse for having it. So. If you have this in an enterprise application, you'll want to bring in a definition for what this type is uh, so that when you then uh, pull data from it, you know what sort of uh, methods and properties this data object has. Okay, so that's the get weather data query. Let's see where we're using this bad mamma jamma. So we go here into pages and main and see right here, get weather data. This is barking at us because it's expecting two to three arguments, but it got zero. So it helps walk us through it. Again, TypeScript for the win. An argument for lat was not provided. I bet an argument for lom was not provided as well. So I'm just going to look up uh, Tiger Oregon lat lom. Okay, you see I use Ecosia. So for every, I think, six searches performed with Ecosia, it plants a tree. So I've planted 98 trees. Uh, the, more I, the more I search stuff, the more trees I plant. So it's great if you're a web developer. <laughs> if you're like me, you search stuff all the damn time. So I'm planting so many trees just by knowing things. So that's great. Anyways, uh, Tiger to Oregon, Latlon. Here you can see making this call, they give you current, minutely, hourly, daily, and alerts. So I'm going to exclude current. Gonna exclude hourly. I'm I'm just gonna take in minutely, basically, daily and alerts. Okay, so let's see what this does for us. Get rid of that janky. Okay, blank. That's fine because right now um we don't have anything showing. So let's comment this out. That eight pieces of data. Hot diggity. All right. Let's bring up the console because we console logged it. See, there were the errors when I had the wrong latitude. Okay. So, looks like it didn't exclude things correctly. That's fine. So, let's just bring in uh, weather data. Let's say const minutely weather data. Minutely. Oh, let, let's do it this way, actually. All right, let's see. 61 pieces of data, perfect. Okay, so we're, we're cooking now. So let's just take a look at this. And if so, this is another R argument for uh, typing your stuff out. If we had a defined type for this weather data object, then I wouldn't have to console everything out to see what the properties were. I would actually be able to just uh, start typing it and hit dot and it would auto complete. But because it's any, it's just going to tell me that it's anything. But you can see here, we've console logged this out. And you can see each time it gives us an object with the DT, which is date, time, and precipitation. Looks like it's not raining in Tiger for the next hour. That's great. Uh, the only problem is I wanted to visualize precipitation. Uh, so let's think where is a place that is usually, well, here, wait. Let's see what happens if we go hourly. Okay. 48, so it brings in data for the next 48 hours. Sweet, okay. Uh, let's go humidity. That's something that will change. Wind speed, humidity. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're gonna set data, well, we're gonna update data here. So right now, 
data when, when we had the bars which just those random bars right we're, we're gonna add a little bit more structure so we're gonna say uh, DT is date and uh, humidity <laughs> is a number humidity is a number and okay so what this is saying is it's going to expect the data object now to be an array of objects where uh, there's a DT, which is a date, and humidity, which is a number. So what we'll do is we'll, within a use effect that is based off of weather data, so the data we're going to set data to um, weather data map so we're going to map through each of the iterables for the weather data object, and we're going to return an object that is, uh, let's say, DT, which will be a new date based off of uh, D.DT. Okay. Ooh, why is this barking so much? There we go. Sorry about that. I I almost gave up. But here, we're back. Uh, you can see now we've got this. We're setting the data. We're mapping through weather data to DT and humidity. So let's just uh, pass this through to bars now. Data. So bars is going to bark at us, right? Cause bars thinks, hey, uh, data is still structured a certain way. Uh, so let's go over here. Actually, you know what we can do? Nope, 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 nope. We're not gonna get fancy. Uh, date, humidity, number. Okay, so. And here in X scale, the domain, we're gonna map through data. So it's still gonna be scale band, even though we've got dates. Uh, we'll do stuff with lines next time. Uh, but for now, d.dt, dot two string, range, Y scale is now going to be domain of. Uh, so we'll go d3 dot extent. Uh, nope. Let's go data dot map. Uh, d d dot humidity. What we'll do is we'll just assume zero for the min math dot max that. Let's actually put this in the right place. This is barking data dot map. Let's just go. Let's try zero fifteen. Let's just see what that does. Okay, bars height. 
humidity y d dot humidity x d dot dt t string boom look at that okay cool uh let's hide this let's see what's going on okay so we've got bars showing now that's great uh 48 pieces of data fantastic but this doesn't look right uh so the domain i set from 0 to 15 let's do 0 to 100 and see what that does cool look at that okay so we did it folks we did it we got an api query to go fetch data from somewhere else which is personally my favorite part of all of web development uh, we're passing that data from a parent component down through to bars cleanly using React Query and use effect. Uh, we're rendering it and we're using real data. This is all good stuff. Uh, I hope you stuck with it through the end. Uh, if you did, fantastic. If you didn't and you're not watching this, I'm going to change that by having an intro video at the start that actually says stick with it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you all being here. I appreciate you telling me, hey, I see you didn't post something on Wednesday. What's going on? Shout out to my friends in Bogota and Berlin uh, and Hy Hyderabad, everywhere around the world. We're worldwide, which is pretty cool. All 50 of us. Anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys and gals. Take care. We'll, we'll talk soon.